is the stoichiometry of gases notes. Remember, all of this is stuff that we've already done before, so none of this is new concepts. It's just putting old concepts together in a new way. So remember that coefficients give you both the ratio of the moles and the ratio of molecules, although <clears throat> we typically use them as mole ratios more often than anything else because this just isn't realistic for our level of chemistry. Molecules too small. We don't have anything that can actually measure them. But you learned with gases, you can also, if the temperature and pressure didn't change, then you can use the coefficients as volume ratios. But again, it's only with gases, and it's only when they're at the same temperature and pressure. So just to review how to do the different calculations, how do you get from moles to grams? We use molar mass. How do you get from volume to moles? You use S uh, if you're at STP, then you get to use 22.4 liters per mole. If you are not at STP, then you get to use my favorite equation, Pivnert. Solve for volume, rearrange it. Uh, and then getting from one type of gas to a new gas, well, if, you're differ if your conditions differ throughout the course of the reaction, which they often do, then you'll have to use the mole ratio from the balanced equation. But if all of your measurements are made at the same temperature and the same pressure, then you get to use those coefficients as um, volume ratios. So all I have left is just a bunch of examples. <clears throat> First up, calcium carbonate can be heated to make calcium oxide according to this equation. And the question is, how many grams of calcium carbonate must be decomposed to make five liters of carbon dioxide at... STP. STP means we get to use 22.4 liters per mole of gas. Our gas is CO2. It's the only gas present in this whole equation. Uh, so we're going to start with the number that we were given. So 5 liters of CO2, uh, first of all, is going to be our um, molar volume. So 22.4 liters CO2 to every mole. CO2. And then next, we're in moles of CO2, so now we can switch over to our calcium carbonate with our mole ratio. So one mole CO2 to one mole calcium carbonate. And then the last thing is going to be our molar um, mass, since the question asked us for how many grams of CaCO3. So each mole CaCO3 has a mass of 100.1 grams. And you plug this into your calculator, and you get the very interesting 22.3 grams. Tungsten. You might remember this reaction because I put it on your last test. But remember, tungsten is a great little metal because it's the metal that's used whenever you have a light bulb. It's this guy. So you got two wires coming up like this. The tungsten is that guy this little curly Q guy that busts whenever the light bulb goes out. So the question says, how many liters of, here I'll put this in parentheses, how many liters of hydrogen gas at 35 degrees Celsius and 0.98 atmospheres? So we are not at STP, which means we do not get to use 22.4, are needed to react completely with 875 grams of WO3. So I see that I have all this, which means I know I'm going to have to use PIVNERT. So I'm going to go ahead and write that out. PV N R T. So my pressure is 0.98 atmospheres. My volume, it says how many liters of hydrogen, so that's my unknown. My number of moles, huh, I don't have any moles. I'll leave a big old empty box there because I need that information. My R is always going to be 0 0.0821. And my temperature, 35 degrees Celsius plus 273 is 308 Kelvin. Now, what to do about the fact that I don't have moles right now? Well, I don't have moles of hydrogen, but I do have grams of WO3. And you guys learned back in Chapter 9 that you can convert from grams of one substance to pretty much anything else of any other substance as long as you have a balanced reaction to relate them. And so we are going to use this 875 grams of WO3 and convert it to moles of hydrogen using stoichiometry. So 875 grams WO3. First thing is molar mass, and each uh, mole of WO3 has a mass of 231.84 grams to every mole. And then our uh, mole ratio is 1 to 3. And you plug this in, 875, 
875 times 3 divided by 231.84, you get 11.3. So we have 11.3 moles of hydrogen. And so that is actually what's going to go in right here. So now I can use PIBNERT, rearrange for volume, NRT over P. N is 11.3. If you need to re uh, refresh your memory how to rearrange these equations, then go back and watch the 11.2 notes because I'll show you how to do that there. Uh, 0 0.0821. Temperature is 308. Divided by pressure, which is 0 0.980. You plug all this in and you get 11.3. Oops, not plus. Times 0 0.0821 times 308 equals divided by 0.98 equals. 292. And this is liters of hydrogen. Of course, this is entirely too much hydrogen volume-wise to transport. And it is at a very low pressure. And so what they would actually do with this hydrogen is compress it down to about 20 liters into one of those little four foot tall gas cylinders. And in doing so, it actually increases the pressure because like if this was V1, and this was P1, and this was V2, and you were to calculate out P2, this would have a pressure of 14.3 atmospheres, which is ginormous. This would beyond kill somebody. Um, okay, last example. Carbon monoxide will burn in air to produce carbon dioxide according to the reaction right there. This is a combustion reaction. Even though we don't produce water, it is still a combustion reaction because anything reacting with oxygen is combustion. <laughs> So my question is, what volume of O2 at STP, hey, yay, at STP, means we get to use 22.4 on the oxygen, will be needed to react, ooh, there should be a space right there, sorry about that, 3,500 liters of carbon monoxide measured at 20 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 9, 0.953 atmospheres. Oh, wait a minute. This is not STP. So that means my CO, not at STP. My oxygen is. So um, I'm still going to start with my PIVNERT just because when I see all this information, I don't know do I start with stoichiometry or do I start with PIVNERT. So if I start to fill out PIVNERT and realize I'm missing a piece, then that means I need to start with stoichiometry. If I have all the parts that I need for PIVNERT, well, then I know I can start with PIVNERT and do my stoichiometry second. So my pressure of the CO is 0.953. I'm not plugging STP into PIVNERT because it's not necessary. My volume of CO is 3,500. Remember that little decimal just means that these two zeros are significant. My number of moles of CO, I don't know that. My R is still 0 0.0821. And my temperature is 20 degrees Celsius or 293 Kelvin. So if you notice, I have all the parts except for number of moles. So I'm going to go ahead and do my PIVNERT, calculate number of moles, and since I see that I have my volume of oxygen at, I want my volume of oxygen at STP, that means it's going to be oxygen that goes in, or that comes out of our stoichiometry. So I might have to do this on a part two. Um, plug this in, N equals PV over RT, P is 0.953. V is 3,500 divided by R, 0 0.0821. Temperature is 293. That is equal to 0.953 times 3,500 divided by 0 0.0821 times 293. And you get 139, basically. 100, whoa, 39. So this is moles of CO, which we can then use to plug into the formula. So one, or stoichiometry. So 139 moles of CO, I'm in moles, so I can just go straight into my roll ratio. Every two moles of CO, will I'll need one mole of O2, and because I'm at STP, I get to use 22.4. So each mole of O2 will have a volume of 22.4 liters. So you plug this in, 139 times 22.4, divided by two gives you 1,552.98. I'm allowed, let's look, three sig figs, so 1,550. 1550 liters of O2.